and, and doing art and expressing myself. And I, I started doing open mics in 1990, 1989, when I was in like high school and junior high school. And uh, since then I've gone around and traveled around and I've seen a lot of stuff and, and most of it doesn't come anywhere near close to this. Like you see people go out and pay a ticket, it's fifty dollars, and you can see these bands, you know what the songs are gonna be. And this the, the rawness of this is really each each time you come to one of these things, you're gonna have a unique experience. People are expressing themselves and each time it's gonna be completely unique. And I'm telling you, like, treasure it and nurture it because it's not out there. This is not what you're gonna get to pay to see. So one of the things that, that for me, that I, I have skill with being able to record and, and uh, I've got some, some equipment, and I'm, I'd like to come out and record all of you guys when you come out, if you want that. I want to invite you to have the opportunity and put up a YouTube channel and it'll be Santa Fe Underground Expressions, you know, fuck you, or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I wanted to, but I didn't, I didn't record tonight because I wanted to, like, out of respect, for everyone, I didn't want to just be in the back with the recorder, but I want to let you know, if I'm ever here, I'm going to bring my little recorder and tell me, like, hey, you know, it's okay, or maybe we'll set it up and I'll just record unless you tell me not to, I'm not sure, but something like that. We need to get this shit out there for people, because this inspires people. I will. All right, right on. All right, do you think, Tommy? So I'm going to say a couple poems. Um, after seeing everybody else, I gotta tell you, it's a little bit awkward. I feel like I'm in a different, whole different echelon, nowhere near where you guys are in terms of the rawness. But um, I appreciate you sticking around and hearing some of my stuff. Um, and we're recording this for my kids right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm gonna start with, uh, this is a piece. Most of my poems, when I, I just write them stream of consciousness, I don't edit them. I write them in one sitting and it takes me five, ten minutes and I'm done and I don't look at it ever again. So I haven't like actually seen this poem since I wrote it maybe a year and a half ago until tonight when I just went and I printed it out and I still I decided not to look at it. So I'm just reading it. This is the first time since I wrote it a year and a half ago. Um, so if I fuck up, you know, it's, sorry, I just don't. <laughs> All right, this is called Mad Release. Um, Seeking some mad release, do I seek peace? I do not. So shifting sands of consciousness, brandishing meaning with an obsequious grace, Arjuna has lifted his mastery thus, and so cradles the string with his face. Perhaps children, or job, career, will I travel into a sunset's cool embrace? Wishing is so dangerous in the twilight of consciousness, so I rest into breaths to remember how I feel and take my next awkward stance on the wheel so that time will divine and my days will be full, entertainment for spirits and gods on the hills who so envy our troubles and dramatic displays. Oh, the timeless embrace, oh, the loss and dismay. So amusing to one who has transcended this lot for a vantage of timelessness, infinite mastery, Nowhere left in this master for thought. Yes, my broken, my bleeding, imperfect and fallen, the dangers and pains, oh, the awkward unsureties, the tingles of butterflies or the triumph that comes just after the battle or duress. These are moments that gods cannot embrace in their perfections. And so they watch us as we play and wonder at our insurrections. Against what do they rebel, think these perfect loving beings? Oh, why do they make this hell? They watch us hacking at the seams of time and history. Our vindication lies to us about our natures. Someone lines their pockets with the love lost in the winds of commerce. Dance your Kali dance, my darlings. Exultate in this insurrection, manifest our wildest dreams. Create the most inane inventions. Here is our opportunity to dance. I have not seen tomorrow's grace. This could be our last and only chance. 
So let alone the baubles, let the rituals aside, meditate in fields of dandelions, cartwheel through the homicide. There are no more sensibilities to seat in the absence of moral codes. Bittersweet memories. Do I want to be lost in reveries? What's the value of living life without a care? I'm not knowing the answer thus, my friend. But I wonder if I will, in the end, look back. Or will I look forward? Either way, I hope to see you there. Um, so this, this is a poem. I did a series, you know, I, I saw Facebook and I was like, this is interesting. And I decided I was going to use it as a muse because I found so many random beautiful things and disturbing things. And I was like, this is a great way for me to be safe and be able to muse on perfect strangers and not have to deal with them in my day-to-day -day life afterwards, writing this great wrenching poem and be like, hey, <laughs> nice to see you again. So, um, so I started using it, and every time someone would have a birthday on my profile for, for about a year and a half, any of my friends had a birthday, I would go onto their profile page and I'd write a spontaneous poem just thinking about them and whatever came to mind. Whatever it was, it would be boom, and I'd leave it on their page. And so I got like 70 poems that I just wrote randomly that I still haven't really looked at. But it was a really interesting process to kind of free me up to feel more comfortable writing what I'm really feeling or even exploring what I'm feeling and not knowing what it is. So as a practice, if any of you guys, you know, some, something like that. This is one that I wrote for a friend of mine that I'm not even sure who she is, but she's been kind of cool on Facebook. And so <laughs> I went on her page and it was her birthday. And so I just wrote this. And this is kind of, I guess, how she inspired me, you know, uh, just being herself. This is what came to mind. This is Allison Nichols' birthday poem. Tree trance, dance, and feel the elderberry bushes wafting, winds and breezes on this peel of articulated offerings, manifesting grace in the face of ever flow. Will the majesty and space within which all we ever know just waits and listens for its name? And so we play these simple games through which we movement ascertain. And so intentions, seeking gain or attention, were inspiring to release inner peace, softening this inner crease. Imagine through the pain and sorrow what we might create tomorrow. In through you, this view imagines, musing me, these true phantasms manifest. T'was abstract fantasy articulated at our behest. Thus every need we've ever known through us is met within this home. So welcome back, my dearest loving friend. Oh, let us play at let's pretend once again. Okay, so this one's another kind of random inspiration from Facebook person poem. And it's this woman who's got like 5,000 friends and she's from England and she posts, I just, something about her tone. Like she'll just say shit and I'll just be like, yes, that's exact, I, I totally, that's perfect. Don't, like I don't even know why I love you. I love you, I totally love you. I don't know who the no. fuck you are, <laughs> but I love last you. Last one, Tommy. Absolutely no last reason. Poem. This last is the last poem. Yes. Yes, thank you. You're doing great. I'm just telling you, I have a timer here. Ten oh, minutes is up. Okay. Um, the people have to leave at 11, that's why. It's 11.10. 11. It's 11.10. Oh, gosh. Okay, go ahead. Can I do now? Yeah, go. Thank you. Okay. So this is a poem that was inspired by this random woman. So it's called Mystery, and her name is Pandora's Spox. This, so difficult to cultivate an openness to mystery, humility, grace, and childlike wonder, an ability to move without overthought or apprehension, guiding barriers which nurture comfort zones, so our mysteries grow up with us and into hobbies, or idle wanderings in backyard trenches before the call to dinner. Our rituals 
of enigmatic spiritual experience explained away again and again. And again, we've lost our butterflies and found only the cocoons they left behind for us to hide away and warm ourselves in, protected from those winds of change. She floats upon with fragility her faith and wings, luxuriantly lounging on our felted ample asses. We watch her passing by and want to cry. I have worked so hard to throw myself into this river life and through my apprehensions dived abstractly over couches to be cradled in fields and dandelions screaming, life is for the living, as they nestle my repose. For somewhere watching through the veils of passion's past sits comfort's fragile daughter, plump and sickly yearning for surprising twists of fate. I wander blindfolded, feeling revealing cracks in concrete the soul singing into earth consciousness, feeling into this blindfold with vigilant awareness and care, listening for the range and directions of cars. Waiting carefully at the crosswalk, a madman silent in the darkness where others see, trusting carefully, feeling paint lines with my soles, smelling diamond at my back, blind and dancing, why? And yes, and what? Opening myself to myself and to this world fresh and anew, I do not want to be complete. And so the death of madness and changing secrets are what frighten me most of all back to life.